The Lake Orient Police Department has been experiencing some major changes over the past few months, including the controversial hiring of a new police officer. Orient Township is moving forward with the sale of the Orient Center, the building they share with Owen TV. The community was introduced to the new DDA director at a meet and greet in downtown Lake Orion. And local families had plenty of opportunities to celebrate an early Easter in the community. We'll have the colorful highlights later. All this and Solar Eclipse 2024. Hello everyone, I'm Stacey Calloway. I'll have those stories and more on this edition of ON TV News. For 120 years, the Lake Orion Police Department has been protecting and serving the community. Over the past year or so, the department has undergone some major changes. In May of 2023, Todd Stansfield was named Interim Police Chief following the retirement of Chief Harold Rossman. On December 11, 2023, Stansfield was appointed to the position of Chief of Police by the Lake Orion Village Council. Around the same time, the department experienced a staffing emergency when several officers resigned, forcing the village to enter into a contract with Oakland County to provide police services. Over the next few months, the police department hired several new officers. In a now-deleted Facebook post, the department announced the hiring of Officer Mark Aldrich earlier this year. In March, WXYZ reporter Ross Jones revealed that Aldrich has had a troublesome past during his career in law enforcement. As an officer with the Belleville Police Department, Aldrich allegedly took possession of a car donated by a towing company to be given to a family in need and sold it on eBay, pocketing the cash. He was asked to resign, which he did. As an officer with Huron Township, he allegedly had inappropriate contact with an exotic dancer who had been arrested following a car accident. Once again, he resigned from the department. He then was hired by the village of Carlton, Michigan, and racked up numerous complaints there, including a road rage incident over a parking space, and he was suspected of deleting body cam video. Despite having a system in place to document such behavior known as the Michigan Commission on Law Enforcement Standards, Aldrich was hired by the Lake Orion Police Department in early 2024. We reached out to Lake Orion Village Manager Darwin McClary, who told us Aldrich was placed on unpaid administrative leave as soon as the Lake Orion Police Department was made aware of his prior issues, effective January 25th. He has not and will not be returning to work for the department. McClary added that M. Coles, like the village of Lake Orion, did not have accurate information on Aldrich's history due to the failure of the previous police departments to report any issues. During the village council meeting of March 11th, the council went into closed session where they voted to return Todd Stansfield to his previous position as lieutenant at his request. The village has since hired retired Milford Police Chief Thomas Lindbergh as acting police chief for the Lake Orion Police Department. We'll do our best to bring you updates on this story as we gather new information. When the Great Lakes Athletic Club fell into receivership in 2023, Orion Township stepped up as one of several potential buyers. In November, it was announced that the township had placed the winning bid and purchased the facility for $9 million. Since then, the township has been moving forward with its plan of turning the facility into a community center while still accommodating existing customers. During the Orion Township Board meeting on Monday, attention. April 1st, Orion Township Supervisor Chris Burnett gave an update on the status of the Athletic Center. It's our intention to um, slowly start um, moving the assets from the Orion Center to the Great Lakes Athletic Club. And we have met with um, folks. We did a survey that received the greatest feedback of any survey we've ever done in the 12 years I've been here um, related to the purchase of the Athletic Club and what our residents would like to see. The feedback was overwhelmingly um, positive, and we'll share that information with um, the community soon. Um, but uh, that said, we, we have talked as a board about um, what, what is the plan moving forward. The plan moving forward is we've hired a firm called TMP that's helping us work through um, updating and changing some of the space in the existing Great Lakes Athletic Club to accommodate the things that ha we have in the Orient Center. We've told our residents that we aren't going to move programming and um, things from the Orient Center until we have a space as good or better at the new facility. Um, so this process is gonna take us probably a full year. Um, we're thinking probably until next summer. Um, we, we've had a, a kickoff meeting with our friends at TMP 
um, with all the stakeholders here on our end, um, and we have a follow-up meeting with them, and we'll be having some um, real action items um, that we can work look at as a board coming probably in June or July this year, and then we'll have to work through that process. But as such, um, in order to free up the capital that we're going to need to renovate some of that space over there, uh, we've talked as a board about selling the Orient Center. And again, this, this will be uh, maybe stressful or emotional for some, um, but it won't happen uh, until at least the soonest would probably be, would be a, a little more than a year from now. Since the purchase of the Athletic Center, the future of the Orient Center was up in the air, or at least the part of the building that's owned by the township. The Orient Community Cable Communications Commission, the body that funds ONTV, owns part of the Orient Center. During the April 1st meeting, it was announced that Lake Orient Community Schools is the leading candidate to purchase the township's portion of the Orient Center. Um, the group we've had the most discussion with is the school district. It's a, it's a special building um, that is in a residential zone area. Could be used for school purposes. Um, and if you pay attention to the school board meetings, you'll probably know that they have their, um, they're in the process of selling their existing admin building to the property owner, owner adjacent to them um, because they need more space. Um, and they also, the, the developer has a desire to, to um, occupy that property, um, that person that is going to redevelop the Eman Center. Uh, so there are potentially other interested folks, and I want to maybe make a tweak to this proposed motion, but the board has discussed this. Um, what this is asking for us tonight is to just simply allow um, me to work with the superintendent, and really I'm going to work with the, our attorney, and the superintendent will be working with their attorney, to start talking about potentially a, per, a potential purchase agreement that would come back before this board for discussion and deliberation before it's accepted. But we want to at least put this out there now in full transparency to the public that it is the um, plan of this board that once we complete the renovations and make the senior spaces um, exceptional at the Great Lakes Athletic Club site, um, that we will plan on selling the Orient Center and not continue to operate two separate community centers. So discussions with the school district and other interested parties will begin immediately with the township offering opportunities for public input over the next year or so. On November 7th, Lake Orion voters went to the polls to determine the fate of the Downtown Development Authority. Residents voted to save the DDA, but almost immediately after the election, DDA Director Molly Lalone announced she would be leaving her position. Janet Bloom was brought in as interim director until a permanent director could be found. On Wednesday, April 3rd, DDA board members, dignitaries, and Lake Warren residents were invited to 313 Pizza Bar to meet the new DDA Executive Director, Matt Gibb, was hired by the Village Council during their meeting on March 11th and got right to work on March 12th. Gibb is no stranger to the Lake Warren community. He was the Orion Township Supervisor from 2008 to 2011 when he left to work alongside Oakland County Executive L. Brooks Patterson. Well, one is it's hometown, right? So uh, I've been here a long time, uh, maybe not longer than most heritage families, but uh, I really want to come back and try to make a difference uh, within our community. And we're really at an inflection point. A lot of development's about to happen, but the downtown and the district here, um, we, we really have to be careful that we don't lose the identity of who we are. And so the opportunity opened up and they've been gracious enough to say, Matt, we think you're the right person to work with uh, Janet and the team and, and do that work. We asked him what his number one priority is as the new DDA director. The lumber yard, obviously, getting that going and organized and really doing a gateway atmosphere, a project that we can all be very proud of has to be the biggest priority. I mean, the DDA bond finance, the purchase and the, and the initial development of that, um, that's really got to start rolling downhill pretty quick. So that's number one. Number two is really is, is getting ourselves organized around where we're going, meaning we have been a great organization in a great downtown, but um, we spent so much time last year uh, really showing the world who we are and why we need to be here. Uh, now it's time to go, right? So lesson number two and task number two is let's get going. Let's get that organized. Let's get uh, the volunteerism going and let's get on to the next stage of where we need to be. Janet Bloom, who acted as interim director following the departure of Mother Lone, was hired as assistant director. I would say that is really working on making downtown Lake Orion a hub, bringing the people in to shop, to dine, entertainment, and, and um, you know, to really make it a location where we have great events, we have active businesses, we, we focus on economic development that really helps our businesses 
excel and that we can keep that that um, you know that conversation going that we keep building and adding um, great things to our community and build on the successes that have already happened. The new DDA team is working on assembling a calendar of events for 2024. If you have any questions, you can call 248-693-9742 or visit downtownlakeorion.org. Whenever someone is in need, the people of Lake Orion have always met the challenge. Recently, one local organization held its largest fundraiser of the year, and the community once again showed up in support. On the evening of Saturday, April 6th, the organization known as Love, Inc., hosted their second annual Share the Love event at Indian Wood Golf and Country Club. 136 attendees enjoyed an elegant night of dinner and dancing and had many chances to win fantastic prizes donated by local businesses. Just wonderful, we're gonna have a live auction, a silent auction, and we're gonna be sharing love stories. And um, we're really excited about that so the community really finds out how we're trying to reach out to people and actually you know, be in relationship with them and help them get out of the situations that they're in. The money raised at the event allows the ministry to bring together churches, volunteers, and community partners to help neighbors in need. Basically what we're really trying to do is get our name more out into the community and reach out to the people who really need our help. So we have folks that we see on a regular basis and that's okay, but we'd also like to reach out to the folks who may not know about us and may not have heard about what we do and find themselves in a situation that they don't know where to go for help. If you or someone you know can use a little help, feel free to call 248-693-4357 or visit luginkofnoc.org. Easter came early this year, arriving on Sunday, March 31st. There was no shortage of events for Lake Orion families to enjoy leading up to the holiday. Owen TV's Joe Johnson was busier than Peter Cottontail as he headed out into the community to cover some of the events. On the morning of Saturday, March 16th, Orion Township hosted its annual Bunny Bop at the Orion Center. Prior to the event, families were invited to sign up for one of three sessions that took place at 9.30, 10.30, and 11.30 a.m. Approximately 150 family members took part in the event to enjoy games, photo ops with the Easter Bunny, and an Easter egg hunt on the grounds behind the Orient Center. This is one of the best parts of my job. It's so nice when all the planning is done and the actual day is here and you can kind of chill and just watch parents having fun with their kids. It's such a Kodak moment. You've got to get lots of pictures because they grow so fast. So you got to get pictures of them now. The Bunny Bop began in 2010 at Friendship Park, then moved to the Senior Center in 2012, which is now home to the Lake Orion Village offices. The event moved to the Orion Center in 2013, which allowed Parks and Rec to invite more families. Bunny Bob started out at Friendship Park a handful of years ago, um, and that was probably not the best location for that. Um, just we didn't have any indoor facility to kind of keep everybody warm because sometimes we get some not so nice Michigan weather. And over the years, it's just evolved, and here we are in the Orient Center this year. Talk about the uh, weather conditions outside for the egg hunt today. Well, the weather conditions are probably the best we've had in years. We've had years where we've had horizontal snow, rain, you name it. Today is beautiful, so it's a great day for an egg hunt. Meanwhile, as the bunny bop wound down, things were just getting underway at the Cirque Building on Scripps Road. The AU Special Needs Foundation hosted their annual Easter egg hunt at the Cirque Building for the first time, inviting families to enjoy a nice buffet lunch at the cafeteria, activities, games, and crafts in the gymnasium, and photo ops with the Easter Bunny. Volunteers helped spread the plastic eggs in the courtyard, and at approximately 1.30, the Easter egg hunt got underway. There's a, a lack of these events in this area, so my sister um, and other family members of mine are special needs, and we figured out a long time ago that these were great events, and they were just so far away, so we started hosting them ourselves. Uh, it makes me feel better than anything knowing that I'm a part of it, um, and I am just a small part of it. We have a lot of volunteers, and my mom is really the one who does all the work. She just points, and that's where I go. The event was free to the public, and it's estimated that approximately 200 people got in on the fun. Of course, the AU Special Needs Foundation depends on community involvement and donations to make this event possible. 
Well, we actually have had a significant amount of fundraising the past year, and we have a lot more fundraising scheduled for this year. So each year our events grow, and we're just trying to keep up with how fast they grow. The foundation has several more events and fundraisers planned throughout the year. For more information, visit AUSNF.org. From the Cirque Building in Orion Township, this is Joe Johnson reporting for ONTV News. Thanks, Joe. The mission of the Orient Art Center is to nurture artistic expression and creativity of individuals of all ages through classes, exhibitions, and events. Recently, the Art Center kicked off an exhibit of artwork submitted by middle school students. On the evening of Thursday, April 4th, the Orient Art Center hosted an opening reception for their middle school all-media exhibition. The Art Center reached out to Lake Orient's three middle schools, Scripps, Walden, and Oakview, and encouraged art teachers to select the work of students in any medium to display throughout April. I think um, the fun of it is seeing how creative each student is um, and obviously it just brings a breath of fresh air in here, all the excitement and the, the young voices and it's fun to see the excitement of the students showing their parents like their their work and just you know taking the pictures and everything it, it's really great to see. and. I was just telling one of our board members, like, to inspire them to show in this show, like, maybe they'll move on and do our, our high school show, which is, you know, really cool. My, my approach was I already had all the work up on the, in the hallways uh, that was being completed or has been completed. So I was just kind of walking through, and the ones that really jumped out at me, I grabbed. And then as students are aware of it, you know, some are approaching me, can I put this in the show too? And, and I never know how much to bring in, but um, I, I said yes to a lot. And... Um, you know, I, so I wish I could have brought in more. Approximately 100 pieces will be on display until the end of the month. There were no judges or prizes. It was just an opportunity to allow students to have the experience of showing off their talents to the public. Because kids are always making art at school and a lot of times the art stays at school or you know we enter various contests throughout the year as well. Um, but this gives it a better sense of real life. Like if you're going to be an artist, your work's going to be out there, people are going to look at it, family members are going to get excited about it, and uh, it's just a great experience for everybody. And just enjoy seeing the smiling faces coming in the door. I'm just inspired every time I, I walk around here. And the cool thing about our spaces is it transforms with every single show. It's like you never know how the show's going to turn out, how what exhibition is going to catch your eye. And, and this one always does. There's so many bright colors and things to just draw you to all different spaces. So I love coming to work when this show is up because I walk in and it's just like, oh, happy. This is nice. Next up, the Orient Art Center will host an opening reception for their scholarship show on April 25th. Graduating high school seniors are encouraged to submit their work for a chance to earn one of three scholarships. For more information, visit OrionArtCenter.org. Parents who want to nurture their toddler's love of reading recently had an opportunity to do just that while taking part in some hands-on fun. On the evening of Thursday, March 14th, Heartfelt Expressions Learning Center hosted its annual Literacy Night at Scripps Middle School. Families were invited to take part in numerous activities set up throughout the cafeteria, with sponsors and local libraries taking part as well. These activities behind me are all of our classrooms at Heartfelt. So we have about 30 activities because we have about 30 classrooms. And then we also have some sponsors as well. So there's about five sponsors and then each of the libraries in our community are here putting on a, a table as well. Founded in 2011, Heartfelt Impressions has three locations in Lake Orion, Clarkston, and Rochester. They offer educational programs for young children and host events like this, which was free to the public. Yeah, so they start by coming on in and we have some bags for them. In their bags, they've got some flyers about some things in our community. All of our sponsors get to put stuff in our bags as well. And then we put together an activity book. The activity book has the how-to of all of the activities behind me. And then it also has how to scaffold it or how to adjust it for like early learners and late learners, right? Not every kid learns at the same pace. And so we kind of share how to adjust that for any type of learner. And then it also has a little part of how to connect it to literacy, right? Because literacy is not just reading. It's also those foundations of how to get to reading. So all of these activities are based on literacy, but they're all like gross motor, creative arts, fine motor, those sorts of things. For more information about their programs and services, you can call 
218-9524 or visit heartfeltimpressions.net. One of the perks of joining the Orion Area Chamber of Commerce is a ribbon cutting ceremony to welcome the community's newest businesses. Recently, the Chamber celebrated the grand opening of a national franchise's newest store. On Thursday, April 4th, representatives of the Chamber of Commerce, along with business owners and dignitaries, gathered at the Baldwin Commons Shopping Plaza on Baldwin Road to celebrate the grand opening of Boot Barn. On the count of three, one, two, three, Boot, Boot Barn! Barn! It's absolutely fantastic having the Chamber here today and some of the other local businesses to help support us. hope that we'll be able to support them also in the future of our time here in Lake Orion. Boot Barn is a national franchise that started in California in 1978. Today there are 400 stores across the U.S. with four here in Michigan. The company's plan is to have 900 stores in 10 years. Store manager Scott Hayes is originally from Melbourne, Australia. He came to Michigan six and a half years ago. So we offer uh, some of the great range of cowboy boots and western wear. We're actually America's largest western wear and work safety wear. So also if they're after work safety boots, steel toe, composite toe, high visibility gear, flame resistant clothing, we also supply that to the customer, as well as our fantastic country wear and boots for men and women. And actually this store, we do stock some children's clothing too. For more information, you can call 947-622-5099 or visit bootbarn.com. And finally, on Monday, April 8th, Michigan residents were treated to the first solar eclipse since 2017. Here in Lake Orion, we experienced a partial eclipse, which was still pretty exciting. The Orion Township Public Library hosted a viewing party on their grounds and handed out sunglasses for safe viewing. The eclipse peaked just after 3 p.m., thrilling the families in attendance. The next total eclipse visible in the United States will take place in August of 2044. The next total solar eclipse visible in Michigan will occur on September 14th, 2099. And with that, we'll wrap up this edition of ONTV News. On behalf of the entire ONTV News team, I'm Stacey Calloway. Thanks for watching.